Welcome to Moments in the Museum. My name is David Smith and I work in the archive at Highgate School. The object I would like to talk about is a cricket bat that belonged to Albert Knight. Albert Ernest Knight was born in Leicester in 1872. After attending Wigaston Grammar School for Boys, he played local cricket for a number of years before joining the ground staff at Leicestershire County Cricket Club at the age of 23. Although he made his debut for Leicestershire in the same year, it was not until 1899, when he scored over a thousand runs with three centuries, that his place in the team was secure. His career highest score of 229 was made at Worcester in 1903, and that, along with four other centuries, earned him selection for the MCC tour to Australia over the English winter of 1903-4. In 1909, he hit 163 for an England 11 against the visiting Australians at Blackpool, and by the time of his retirement in 1913, he had made over 18,000 runs for Leicestershire, including 3,100s. Strangely nervous before going into bat, he was also a Methodist lay preacher and was said to pray loudly before each innings, Knight was a somewhat dour right-handed batsman, though a very good hard wicket player. His chief strokes were to the offside, in particular a magnificent square cut. He was also a brilliant fielder, and saved scores of runs at cover point. Perhaps his most important contribution to the game, however, was a book, The Complete Cricketer, published in 1906. It was described as a masterpiece of its kind, stuffed full of learned observations in weighty prose, and grandiose in style, containing much startling metaphor. The 1903-04 England tour to Australia was the first overseas venture that the Marylebone Cricket Club, the MCC, had been responsible for sponsoring and arranging. They appointed Sir Pelham Warner, known as Plum, to captain the team with the aim of regaining the Ashes that had been held by Australia since the 1896 Test Series in England. Though seen very much as the underdogs, Warner and his squad of 14, seven of whom had not been down under before, pulled off an upset and won the five test series, three games to two. England won the first test at Sydney by five wickets. During the match, R.E. Tip Foster scored 287 to set a world record for the highest individual test innings. The score is still a record for an Englishman in an Ashes test in Australia and for an Englishman on his test debut. England also won the second test at Melbourne by 185 runs but Australia triumphed in the third test at Adelaide by 216 runs. England were victorious in the fourth test, also at Sydney, by 157 runs, and in doing so regained the Ashes. In this match, Albert Knight scored 70 not out in England's first innings, the highest score by any player on either side. As a consolation, Australia won the fifth test at Melbourne by 218 runs. The 1905 edition of the Wisden Cricketer's Almanac reported that, in every sense, except the financial one, the trip was a brilliant success, the general result far exceeding even the most sanguine expectations. The bat that belonged to Albert Knight is an extra special double spliced edition manufactured by Shaw and Shrewsbury in Nottingham. Both Arthur Shrewsbury and Alfred Shaw had played cricket for Nottinghamshire and subsequently set up their sports business in the late 19th century. The firm finally closed in 1939, with its assets being bought by Greys of Cambridge. The item seems to have been donated to Highgate School by night in 1935. The bat is signed, and the signatures, including such evocative names as Wilfred Rhodes and Victor Trumper, were those of the English on Australian teams, probably from the fourth test. Albert Knight had joined Highgate School in 1913 as cricket professional and groundsman. The February edition of Cricket, a weekly record of the game from that year, commented, Leicestershire, never much in luck's way, will suffer a heavy loss in the retirement of Albert Knight. That worthy cricketer literateur has accepted a place as coach at Highgate School. It is a pity, for AEK had a lot more first-class cricket in him still. And the local paper commented, one can sympathise with him in his desire to retire from county cricket while still in almost full possession of his powers. That being so, the chance of getting a post of cricket coach in a good school is one which could not be lightly passed over. 
It strikes one as just the sort of work which the intellectual cricketer of the Leicestershire team is eminently suited for. It will give him a chance of the quiet life and the cultured surroundings which have always been dear to him. He had been awarded a benefit match in 1905, from which he received the sum of £500, perhaps £60,000 in today's terms, more than any other Leicestershire professional. In the same year, he married Edith Bethel at Church Langton in Leicestershire. Highgate's headmaster for almost all of Albert Knight's time at the school was Dr John Alexander Hope Johnston, whose main legacy after 28 years in charge was perhaps the new science buildings opened by the Air Minister, Sir Samuel Hoare, in 1928 and inspected later by the Prince of Wales. Both Knight and Johnston are depicted in the top right-hand corner of this 1922 cartoon from the Cricketer magazine. Amongst his star pupils in the 1920s was R. W. V. Robbins, who went on to play for Cambridge University, Middlesex and England as a right-handed batsman and leg spinner. Robbins captained both his county and his country, and after the war served as a test selector. Knight also worked at Belvedere College in Dublin for the fortnight of the Easter holidays between 1927 and 1936, where the college magazine reported that Mr Knight's coaching was of a most subtle kind. Always a keen student of the game, he well knew that of the great players in the past, few possessed similar styles. Accordingly, he tried to mould the pupil according to the pupil's preference. Albert Knight remained at Highgate coaching cricket until the Second World War, living at 24 Hampstead Lane, a house attached to the school sports pavilion on Senior Field. During the war, and by then in his late 60s, he returned to Highgate to teach the six formers amongst the 100 or so boys who had remained in London while the majority of pupils had been evacuated to Westwood Ho in Devon. He lectured on the history of philosophy alongside his friend Arthur Waugh, father of Evelyn, who spoke about Victorian poetry. Renowned Highgate schoolmaster H.J. Gibbon, reminiscing about Albert Knight in 1965, wrote, We used to say that he was the best, albeit self-educated, member of the staff, and he was devoted to masters like A.H. Parker, who could, who could discuss philosophy with him. He was the finest exponent of the late cut I have seen in any class of cricket, and the most eager snatcher of the short run. We see his influence in the cricket of Walter Robbins and others. Albert Knight passed away in 1946 after failing to recover from an operation. It has been suggested that he died of a broken heart, having lost his wife in 1940 and his 32-year-old son a year later. An anonymous obituary in the Chumlian, the school magazine, suggested that it is doubtful if any school has ever had such a remarkable man in its employ. In 2015, an oil painting covered in dust was discovered in the sports pavilion when it was being cleared prior to refurbishment. It turned out to be a portrait of Albert Knight painted by Highgate's new art master, Cuffin Williams, in 1945. But that is another story. Thank you for watching. I do hope that you might be able to visit the school museum to see Albert Knight's cricket bat for yourselves.